All right. I'm not saying that uh, the Chinese are suddenly bending. Uh, I am saying they're beginning to, to blink a little bit more here. Reports that uh, to make it over to the United States, they on this whole trade tip, they might buy more U.S. goods. Not enough necessarily to completely wipe out the, what, $375 million trade gap between our two countries or even reach a goal of $200 billion over the next few years. But, but to start something. What does it mean? Uh, we've got Fox Business Network's uh, Susan Lee and just back from Beijing, Colin McShane. Um, Susan, yes. what are they talking about here? Well, I think it's optics, basically, because, yes, you can spend a lot. And China has a lot in the bank. They have over $3 trillion in foreign exchange reserves. So just spending a few billion dollars just to, I would say, Band-Aid over this big trade surplus that they enjoy, that buys them time because really what they need to do are structural changes, right? They need to stop subsidizing their their industries. They right. need to stop forcing people into joint ventures in order to operate in China, and they need to stop stealing some of the technology. Right. I don't think there was a ton of progress made on those issues. The last few issues that Susan mentioned last week, but there are two big ones from China's point of view. One's this program they're going they're going to run over the long term called Made in China 2025, where essentially they're trying to make their country into a tech powerhouse all by itself. And in the U.S.'s point of view, they're kind of getting around some World Trade Organization rules to do it. So that's a big sticking point. Doesn't seem like they moved on that. But this trade deficit is kind of interesting because that's the president's big issue, right? right? Every single time he talks about this, he puts it in terms of what our deficit is. And the U.S. went to the Chinese, said, yeah, cut off 200 billion off a 330 some odd billion trade deficit by the end of 2020. I think the Chinese were taken back maybe by that number. But the argument from the U.S. point of view is that it and I think maybe they made a little bit of progress on that is that it's kind of in their interest to cut some of it off to buy more U.S. goods. They're trying to go to a more consumer for years, more consumer led economy. So they do have an interest in bringing more U.S. goods in. If they do, then maybe both sides win a little bit. It's just a question of what, what the president suffice. will accept. I mean, like win. you said, mm -hmm. I mean, it, 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 it might buy them time, but yeah. they, they've got it. I, I would assume to impress the president and, 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 and our side enough goods to bring that gap down. Right. And, and just the way the economy in China is structured, it, it's like turning a titanic, ti yeah. titanic on a dime because it's mostly state owned, right? Um, so the government owns most of the industries. That's not going to change for a long, long time. They still subsidize a lot of the the companies that operate in China. And, you know, they kind of control and dictate what companies like Alibaba and Tencent still do. Right. And they get they don't like us telling them what their government can or cannot support, right? No. Another thing that I picked up there last week in talking to someone is their kind of whole outlook so on this. You were actually physically there. It wasn't a green screen? Uh, we thought it was a green screen. <laughs> no, I, oh, trust me, I was there. It was a okay. nice long flight. Um, because like an hour later, we saw you in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I wouldn't, don't put it past me. Like that time you went to Davos, you were great over there. Remember that? Exactly. Um, the, the, the one conversation I had with someone over there that I found interesting and kind of put their point of view into perspective was that I was told at least that the way China looks at us is that they say the United States sees China as a threat in passing it over the long term and being kind of the big player out there, the more powerful country, the more powerful economy, number one on the world stage, and that all of this, this is them talking from, from us, is to try to slow that process down, that they're afraid we're going to pass them. So again, maybe they are trying to buy time, but they think they can play this out over the long term, and they see the U.S. as this, um, as, you know, this long-standing power that's, that's threatened by them. Yeah, that's how they that, see that's it. That's in their view. Right? Well, switching gears a little bit, guys, while I have you here, I don't know if you saw the Wall Street Journal survey where a lot of economists think by 2020 we're going to have a recession. Now, that's not a huge leap that eventually things will slow down and we'll have right. a recession. So I don't know how bold a prediction that is. But the uh, face value, 2020, what do you think? Cyclicality. Things go up, <laughs> things go down. I think Bill Gates also said it on Reddit that uh, a financial crisis will happen at some point. Again, not a bold prediction because, right. you know, uh, th it's all cyclical. Things happen right. uh, over time. But this is the longest economic expansion that we've seen, right? The longest, right. I think, was the 1990s, and that was a 10-year expansion. We're in that 10th year. And uh, just to add two more to it. Well, the argument, again, is it, it's been 
been such a weak expansion, better from what we came out of, but that, that would have a longer shelf life because of that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that is. And that might be true. The timing yeah. will be everything, though. I mean, it kind of reminds you, it goes back to the George Bush 92 argument about when recessions end, when recessions begin, and how that affects presidential races. So when this recession, whenever it comes on, does come on, is it right in the middle of an election year? Is it right at the end of a campaign that's kind of already been decided? So a matter of months can make a big difference. Yeah, because, people you know, feel it usually six months later. Yeah. And, then, right. and, and, yes. and then poor George Bush Sr., we were coming out of that right. in that final quarter of the year, to your point, but it didn't help them. It didn't help them. And they late. usually say that markets lead the economy anyways, at least the direction of it. So. Economists always try to have it both ways. It's a crazy argument, though. Mm -hmm. I mean, a crazy conversation to be, because something completely unforeseen will probably happen between now always does. and then. Yeah. And that, that's so. the future. You want to come okay. to China with me next time? Uh, yeah. Do you think he was actually? He, <laughs> Do you think I don't, think I don't know. Uh, Peking duck, did you at least have some duck while I you were did. there? I uh, did. I love the food. I do. That's right. why I went, really. Then I believe yeah. him. What are these trade talks? <laughs> I think he was there. All right. Guys, thank you seriously both very, very much.